this, our final part of our tutorial, we're going to describe the different Rotom technologies that the five top Rotom component vendors use and why the future direction of Rotoms might change the competitive landscape. In part two of our Rotom tutorial, we describe the three main parts of a Rotom blade. They are the wavelength selective switch, which separates the light into various frequencies and selects one particular frequency. Second, the amplifier, which amplifies all the frequencies on the outgoing fiber, and a channel monitor or error detector, which makes sure that all the frequencies that need to be present on the output stream are there and that the volume levels are approximately the same. We've already described two technologies that various component makers use to both switch the signals and to attenuate them. One is a mirror-based approach, otherwise known as MEMS, and the other is a liquid crystal display approach. In addition to these two technologies, a third technology called liquid crystal on silicon is uniquely deployed by a company called Finisar that is also used for attenuating and switching signals inside a wavelength selective switch. Now let's review the switching and attenuation technologies used by the largest five component vendors for wavelength selective switches in the marketplace. JDS Uniphase is one of the top two vendors of WSS technology. They use MEMS technology for both switching and attenuation. One degree of rotation in the mirror is used to select the output port, while a second degree of rotation is used to take this light beam and take it off center, thereby reducing its amplitude. This allows the different outputs of the different frequencies to be balanced on the output stream. Finisar is uniquely positioned on this table and is the only one that uses liquid crystalline silicon technology for both switching and for attenuation. Privately held Capella, similar to the JDS Uniphase approach, uses MEMS technology for both switching and attenuation. What's different about Capella versus JDS Uniphase is that Capella integrates an onboard ch channel monitor, whereas JDS Uniphase uses an external channel monitor. Coadna uses multiple layers of liquid crystal technology to do both switching and attenuation. And Aclaro typically uses a combination of MEMS and liquid crystal technology. Liquid crystal is used for attenuation, and MEMS is used for their higher port count rotums. For their lower port count rotums, such as the 1x1 and the 2x1, a second liquid crystal stage is used, and MEM is not used in order to keep the costs low. Now let's talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of each of the approaches. Coedna uses multiple layers of liquid crystal technology. One layer is used to provide a digital switch. By either applying voltage or not, they can block an individual frequency of light. A second level of liquid crystal display is used to attenuate the outgoing signals. By layering these liquid crystal layers on top of one another, they can create a multi-stage switch. Coadna's competitors claim that because this technology is single layer, it is hard for them to scale when the port counts of the Rotom eventually get large. On the other hand, at the recent OFC, we saw Coadna providing a prototype of a 23 by 1 switch. JDSU and Capella both use a similar MEMS-braced approach. They use two-dimensional mirrors. In one dimension, the mirror is used to select the output port of the signal. And by moving the mirror in a second direction, the beam can be taken off center, thereby effectively attenuating it. One of the main differences between the JDS Uniphase approach and the Capella approach is that this error detector or channel monitor sits inside the wavelength selective switch for Capella, while for JDS Uniphase, it sits on an external component. Capella's competitors claim that by keeping the channel monitor separate from the wavelength selective switch, it becomes easier to tell when there's a failure as to which of these two components has failed. One of these boxes. Capella counters that fault isolation within a board is typically not required in the field. Meanwhile, their closed loop architecture provides for less power usage as well as faster switching speeds. Of the five companies we are describing in this tutorial, only Finisart uses a liquid crystal on silicon technology for its basic wavelength selective switch technology. Unlike a MEMS approach, the liquid crystal display does not move inside this wavelength selective switch. Instead, by varying the voltage across the millions of pixels inside the display, the Finisar is able to get a significant amount of control over the light beam for both the purposes of switching as well as attenuation. Finisar's competitors claim 
that because the switching speeds on liquid crystalline silicon are so much slower than for MEMS, typically measured in seconds instead of milliseconds, that the company will have trouble migrating this technology when switching speeds become more important in rotoms later on in the network. However, the company counters that even though the switching speed inside of LCOS is slow, when compared to a MEMS-based approach, a typical MEMS design, after doing a switch on the mirror, has to rebalance all the volumes of the outgoing frequencies through an iterative process by talking over and over to the channel monitor, and that this iterative process tends to take several seconds. Therefore, Finisar argues that the overall system switching speeds for both approaches are approximately the same. What we do know is that both of these systems, both the MEMS approach as well as the liquid crystal on silicon, are probably inadequate for tomorrow's switching needs for rotums. We know that both companies or both sets of companies, ones that use MEMS and ones that use liquid crystal on silicon, are working on next generation solutions to increase their switching speeds. For most of their wavelength selective switches, Aclaro uses a combination of MEMS and liquid crystal for their wavelength selective switch technology. They use a single degree of rotation MEMS mirror to select the output port for the switching function. Then they pass the signal through a liquid crystal stage where they can apply varying voltages to adjust the outgoing volume. For their smaller port count rotums, this MEMS braced approach for switching is replaced with a second level of liquid crystal display that's used as a digital on-off switch.